look at that one who is crying on the inside. Father, I feel like there ain't no use in going on no more. Yeah. But oh God, you got a way of doing things. Yes, sir. Father, give me that one right now. Carry that heart, carry that mind. Remind him, God, that we've been in jewels for a night. Yeah. Until joy come, continue to preach. Yes. And joy come, we're going to continue to lift you up. Now, Father, we gather here this evening just to lift your name up. Give you the glory you want to praise for all you have done. For Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will allow your Holy Spirit just to come down for a little while. Allow it to take free course on the back wall, temple. And when Father, all that's been done and said, somebody will have a reason to tell you thank you. Somebody else will have a reason to give you a name for you. Now, Holy Spirit, do as only you can do. Yes, yes, yes. Move. Move. Touch. Yes. Deliver. Yes. Set free. Yes. Do it in the name of Jesus. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Certainly we give honor to God and to the Spirit in this building on this afternoon. To um, Reverend Denson and Reverend Waddell, Reverend John, to any other ministers or pastors who are in the house on this evening. I said, God bless you. Thank you for coming out with us on this evening to help us lift up the name of the Lord. And as we're going along this, with the service, um, I think it's been maybe 12 years ago, might have been 10 or 12 years ago, I happened to take a trip down to Hollywood. And there was this church by the name of St. Luke Candy Church. And these guys got up and began to sing. Now, one thing that, that kind of fascinates me, I'm, I'm a praiser. I love to praise the Lord. You know, we were used to women doing that. But these were a group of men who got out of themselves with the tambourine. It wasn't just because the tambourine or cow bell, but the mere fact that they got out of themselves and just let the Lord have his way. And from the time that I have met them, they've been doing the same thing every time they get up or they go to somebody's church or even within their own church. You, you can tell that they don't mind praising the Lord. And I fall in love with all of them. How many of you guys on that choir? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bob, hey, Pastor. Hey. Hey. Yes. They're that kind of people. And I'm so grateful when the invitation went out. They said they will come. And I give honor to um, their pastor, Reverend uh, Bradley, who allowed them to be with us on this evening. And I want to say to you guys, for those of you who are um, kind of worried about your hair, your weave, <laughs> listen, you might as well let us let us. If you're worried about them, them three inches and six inches, that's something you wear, just go ahead and keep it on. If, if the corn you get in the herd does just slide and should be going on. If you happen to get a run in the tan holes, that's all right, ain't nobody there. So. But I want you to be free in your worship on the seat. If you're anything like me, I just may have to run. Sorry, excuse all right, all right. me. If I offend somebody in my when I do the car wheel.
and seem to think that they, there's no way out, they can't get out of the way they hear you say. Because what they're looking at now is a person who's come out of that or even still in it, and that's going to encourage somebody else. If God did it for her, that's right. Yeah. 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 for me. Yeah. That thing you're going through that seems just too hard, and I'm there. Well, he did it for somebody else. And said, God changes not. So I'm excited. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody else expect what he should
you're singing in. Yes. Testimonials. Testimony. What is a testimony really? What is that thing that you know if it had not been for God to have done it, you wouldn't have gotten through You wouldn't have been able to, to, to weather the storm. It's that thing that you know you can do by yourself. So this is where we come to the part of this service. Perhaps when you got that letter from me or you got that phone call or I saw you in the street, you were telling me your story. And I said, you know what, I think I need you to come and tell your story. Yeah. So that somebody can be encouraged just to hear what God has done for you. Now, I know some of your stories. I won't call you out. Unless I have. <laughs> but I'm going to let it be up to you. If you feel the Holy Spirit is coming at your heart, I've already told you I heard it, but I do believe you can bless somebody else if you tell it. Yeah. We're going to open the floor at this time for you to come and share boldly what he has done for you. There's a gentleman by the name of Robert Scott I met about, wow, 11 months now, maybe. My first appointment at Greater Bethel Lady Church. Um, when I got there, we decided to do a building fund. You know, ask God, what can we do to liquidate memorial? The Holy Spirit led me to write a letter, write a letter, and send the letters out to people I didn't even know. One of that letter wound up at Goodwill, Amy Church, all the way in Mount Pleasant. Mm -hmm. The letter was read by the secretary, and this gentleman said, when he heard the letter, something tugged at his heart. He said the Holy Spirit said to help her. Never been on Edisto. He's never met me. Didn't know anything about the church. He said something touched his heart. He called me. We began to talk on the telephone. I told him what we were doing, and he said, you know what? I want to help. Eight and a half months it took us to pay that mortgage off. This gentleman has been sending not only an offering, his tithes and offering, but he's been given until that debt was paid. He said, I, vow, I make a vow to God. Not so much to you, Pastor, but I make a vow to God that I will see you guys through. And he did just that. But in the midst of that, he still had a story to tell. Mm -hmm. I asked him to come. I fell in love with him. At least we never even met. But I fell in love with the conversation of the, phone, the heart and the Holy Spirit. And he began... He was now part of the Greater Bethel family. We claimed him. Amen. All the way from Mount Pleasant. Now, fast forward, I'm here at Emmanuel West Ashley. I called him again and said, you know, we're having a service. I would love for you to come and just worship with us. And if you feel that the Lord has laid upon your heart to tell one or two or a piece of your story, would you come? Well, he's here on this afternoon. Amen. And since you guys didn't come on your own, I'm calling him up. <coughs> I'm going to ask Brother Scott to please come to the front. <laughs> And just tell whichever story you want. One, two, Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I didn't come to tell the story. Uh, I came over because I normally try to support. Some way God has a way of doing things. Amen. And my story starts back when I was in California and I was uh, working as a captain of a night shift on the security post. And I got tired. And by getting tired, I decided I lived by myself at the time I wasn't there. And one man said, Well, you need to get up. So I got walked outside. But see, I wasn't in the spiritually asset of things like I am now, like I should have been. Uh, I thought it was all about me at the time, you know, I was out there praying. So I came back, and the Lord even allowed me to have the nerve and the spirit move me to get into my car myself, by myself, because I live by myself. And I drove all the way out some retired Air Force. So I drove all the way out to the base, not thinking anything was wrong or anything was going to happen. And when I got there, they asked me questions, and I just fell out. 
so the clothes that I had, they went to my pocket and they got some phone numbers and they was all at work. The number they called was one of my buddies that we was in Vietnam together and he lived there, him and I just went back and forth. So he came out and he knew my kids. Well, they went into my heart and, and, and I just were giving up for life. So they asked my daughter, my oldest daughter, for some kind of day, I got in some kind of cut through the chase. And she said, let me, cause I had told them, don't hold me around. If something happened, let me go. Amen. But she called her sisters and they said, the doctor said, give him 24 hours. Well, they approved it. I'm here today. Amen. And, 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 and look like Brother Stern over here. The 30th of last month, I had to go in and they had to put a battery into that same pacemaker. But you see, God is so good. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. It didn't even allow me to worry about it. Yes, yes. And he went in and he did that. Yes. Now, as I was going out to the Edistra Island, to this church, I met so many good people, you know? It was just like everybody was home. Amen. I even started getting cakes, buying cakes from a young lady that's there. And the lady called me at home. I said, where you get that cake from? I gave her the lady's phone number. <laughs> and she told me just a few minutes ago that the lady came and picked up the cake. All right. All right. But the point I'm trying to make, if you are like Ezekiel, Ezekiel was the type of person that believed in the Holy Spirit. All right. All right. See, he was there and God spoke to me, not just was a priest, uh, but he was a prophet. prophet. But he used the situation so that God could turn him all kinds of ways. Right and this morning, Sunday school lesson, because I'm telling you, I go to church now. And this is what the service was about this morning. Yeah. And it said that Ezekiel was away from this, his uh, church for 19 years. Yeah. But the reason he left the church was the fact is, People's like we were. Now nobody don't tell me you weren't out there once before. All right, all right. All right. We were all right. out there. But see, God have a way of bringing us all in. So I did make a promise, not only promise to help that church, I promised God that I would be with him until I leave. Amen. So thank you all for listening. Amen. somebody else who has a story to tell. You told it to me.
Two days before it closed, my wife got a call, and she called me. She said, we got a call from Fannie Mae. And Fannie Mae said, Ron Point is not the owner of your mortgage. We are. All right. And we will cut the mortgage in half. So I'm telling somebody, if you are facing the problem, wait on God. Don't you push no panic button. It's almost seven months I supposed to build up that house. All right. But if God, I, I, I declare that God gave me that home. And then no devil in hell won't take it. So listen, I don't know about you, but see, I got a reason to tell God thank you. I don't know about you, but I got a reason to wear my hat. I don't know about you, but I got a reason in I don't know about you, but I got a reason to lift God. Every church they saw us together before they saw the other spouse, but that's really my brother, brother. So I thank God for him. I'm gonna ask my sister. Oh, I'm so sorry. Come on. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. Good evening. Truly, my testimony is It's an amazing testimony about my mother. Mm -hmm. About two months ago, they gave her home. Tell, tell me that they nothing that they could do. No more. Mm -hmm. Wanna put her on dialysis? Wanna put her on all this operation? She said no. We brought her home. I'm one of sixteen kids living by the same parents living mama had a birthday last weekend 88 years old fully she hasn't had a doctor come by the house yet hospice came in but it was in and out whatever but my mother is going to win because God has her. Yes. And if you don't believe that God is real, <laughs> truly, I'm a living witness to tell you. I'm a living witness to be. Tell you, God is truly awesome, real God. Yes, 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 yes. That's in my testimony. Yes.
Well, um, I had my first back surgery about nine years ago. And after that, I needed another back surgery. Um, a lot of people remember that I could only come to Sunday school for a little while. And then when I came and I stayed at the church, I had to lay on the floor. I couldn't sit up. If I was driving someplace over 10 minutes, I have to stop on the side of the road and lay down. I couldn't sit up. The doctor said, well, if you have a problem walking, I can fix that. But sitting up, I can't fix that. That's arthritis in your back. And there's nothing I could do to fix that. Well, God began to work. God ways are mysterious because I was walking in my backyard and I stepped, stepped in the hole. And I felt when my back moved. It took me about 20 minutes to get out of that hole, but I got out, had the MRI, and by that time, everything was messed up in the back. But glory be to God, I had the second surgery, and I can sit up. But the second surgery also failed because my leg dropped. And what that means is that when I walked, my left leg couldn't come forward. And my toe would bend over, so I would be And so he said, well, we have to go back in there. We have to take the screws out that didn't work. And I'm going to try to clean up your back. And we went into the second, the third surgery. And I came out and I kind of moved my foot a little bit. And we were rejoicing and everything. But then the condition did not get any better. One doctor told me that I would be in a brace, legs brace, for the rest of my life. I was walking with a cane, and one day the Lord sent a man by my house. I know the Lord. Because who would come to your house and say, ma'am, do you have a cane that I can borrow? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody but God. Because God wanted that cane gone. So I said immediately, yes, I have a cane. And I went in the house and I gave the man the cane and the physical therapist said, y'all don't know each other. I said, no. And she said, does he have to bring it back? I said, no. Does he have to pay for it? No. He just need to go and be blessed. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't even look back because I, I just knew those were angels. So the cane were gone and the, the other cane was gone. But where I am to tell you today is I can move my leg forward. I can't tap my left foot. Now, that, that doesn't seem like much to y'all, right? We take so many little things for granted. But when you can't even tap your foot, and that foot is causing you to fly forward all the time, but God is yet strengthening my left side. Like I, I'd be showing Reverend Benson and Reverend Judah and I could tap my foot and they didn't know why. But for many years, I couldn't tap my foot. And my left leg was dragging behind me. I, I started from not being able to sit down in church. And I thank God y'all are sitting there. Y'all are sitting there, but you know, there are times in life where you're not going to be able to sit down, and it's going to hurt, and it's going to bring tears. But I pressed on, and I came to church, even if I had to lay on the <coughs> And I'm still pressing on. And I thank God that I could lift my feet. I thank God that I could sit in his sanctuary. <laughs> Nothing too hard for God after 50 years of wearing glasses. I had cataract surgery, the bottom line back in um, August, and they said, okay, we can't fix you enough that you, you still need some prescription glasses. When I went back, he says, you don't need any prescription glasses. You don't need any prescription glasses. Just get some little reading glasses. All right. This week I was reading. And God says, you know one thing, you're using them glasses too much. Put those glasses down. 
God is still yet restoring my sight. I was legally blind without my glasses. I couldn't see, and I wouldn't be able to tell what any of y'all look like without my glasses. Now, some people may say, well, that's the cataract surgery. No, I say that's God. Because yes. God did above and over what the doctor said. I thank God, I thank God, I thank God for what he's doing in my life. I thank him. And just remember that I, I, I give it all, God all the credit. I worked in a hospital for 32 years. I started with training at 17, and I saw so many pe sick people. And I'd always pray, Lord, bless them, and God keep me on my feet. And God has kept me on my feet. God bless you. As you are sitting there and listening to the different testimonies, you know, some may say, you know, so what? <laughs> or some may say that's something very minor. But you know, until it happens to you, that's right. until you're the one lying in that bed and can't get up, like her, I've, I've been doing the kind of work I've been doing for 31 years, started in high school at age 16, caring for the elderly. So at a very young age, even prior to that, I witnessed people who were so grateful that I came and gave them a glass of water. That's right, man. Somebody was grateful that I could brush their hair, put their clothes on, to eat and feed them. For those of us who can do those things without a struggle, mm -hmm. we're better than blessed. So as you're right. hearing the testimony, please don't make it in your mind that, you know, I don't want to hear this. Right. Just know that to, to somebody, you know, God has stepped in when the man right. said no, right. or when they thought they couldn't get through it, he stepped in, he showed himself mighty. And just because it's not you on today, we can't see that far down the road. We don't know what's going to happen on tonight. Just be grateful that it's not you Amen. standing in their shoes as you're continuing to hear. We read in the, in the Bible of how God does this and how he does that. But in your presence on this afternoon, we're hearing stories of how God stepped in, how God healed, how God delivered, turned around and even set free. So hear, really hear with your heart what people are saying. It may not affect you today, but lo and behold, yes, sir. tomorrow may come. That's right. You can be that one, and it'll That's come right. back to your mind when somebody got up and said, as I was saying earlier, many of you have heard some of the stories, and then for some of you, this is your very first time. Don't dismiss it to make it like it's nothing. Hear what they are saying. Have some patience. I'm thankful for your patience this far, and I hope you don't have to leave where you're going to miss out. I said earlier in reference to my sister, she's somewhat a shy person unless you get to know her. Everywhere I've gone so far, I've been telling her story like I told about my mother. But it's not the same unless the person who's been through that is telling herself. Now you're going to hear her tell you what she has been through. And my thing, when, when you're telling, tell the truth. The truth can be ugly sometimes. Sometimes it can hurt. And sometimes it can people look at you even funny. But you're telling what God has done. There's no shame in what God has done when he brought you from. Because somebody needs to hear. I'm asking her. Uh, when we had the service on Edisto, she said she couldn't leave without telling the story. But on this afternoon, I'm asking her to share. And if she feel like telling everything, she can tell it all. Because at the end of the day, she said, I know God for myself. I heard Grandma. I heard Mama. I even heard you. But I got a story to tell myself. Won't you just listen to Sister Johnson? Amen. Um, I've been a diabetic since I was 22. I'm 52 now. Um, I just took me a diabetic for granted. I didn't do the things I should have. They didn't take my insulin and all this stuff. And, and now, I mean, I'm paying for it because um, about five years ago, I lost my right feet. They go to knee amputation. And I lost it, and I end up, a year later, I end up on dialysis. I go three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm on that machine four hours a 
was a big fool. And uh, in 2012, he removed one leg, two off the left feet. In 2013, we removed another two off. Mm -hmm. And this year, March of 2014, they took two more off. So now I only got one, they two on my left. But I thank God because I can still walk. I tried two or three times to kill myself, but it just oh, wouldn't work. I mean, I take overdose of medicine, overdose of insulin, but I guess God even liked me because I'm still here. No, he wasn't. I had to tell yeah. my story, yeah. so y'all just keep me in your prayers. Amen. 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 Not one replacement for 
Four. And I, I can't wear heels, but that's all right. I can wear some nice dress shoes. I keep them on. I can keep them. So let me tell you, God is good. And don't be ashamed to tell your testimony. Because there's some, there's more than one, but you know what Brother Robert said? I can just give you that one. Just that one. First thing I did, I put in some orders and said, well, I'm going to put it for Kip and give North Carolina. Right. And I've done that. And we got it. So, well, the baby, you know what we need to do now? I said, I only got five years left. Uh, I'm going to just get and go home and let's buy a house. That time, you know, I had five boys and one daughter, all kids were on there and gone with nine, nine grandkids. So, we moved home and I moved them home and I said, well, I can commute back and forth from here to Camp Lejeune. Well, y'all know Camp Lejeune from Charleston is 300 miles. That's right. That's five, that's five hours. And I did that thing for about five years. <coughs> but one night, I left a little too late. I left about 11.30, give and take, somewhere about that. I'm driving along the road and got to Myrtle Beach, so I'm gonna fall asleep a little bit. <laughs> Got a car and got a coat and some poke skins. So, well, they're gonna hold me up here until I get where I'm at. <laughs> so I, I, I got in Leland. I, I remember when I got to Leland, I said, you know what? I just kind of like blacked out. And let me tell y'all something. When I woke up, I don't even know when I got to that gate. From Leland, North Carolina, and Wilmington to that gate, they 57 miles. From that, from Wilmington over that bridge, to Camp Le June Gate. When I woke up, when I woke up, I was at that gate. I didn't even know, I didn't, I didn't even know where I was. And I drove to that gate and I stuck on the side. Oh, I got here. All right. And I told my mama that. And from then on, I never done that no more. Driving like that and leaving late. Sometime I didn't even come home. Just when that was a scare. So God opened my eyes. He wasn't ready for me yet. All right. And I couldn't tell nobody what happened. I just remember I was living. I didn't remember no time in Wilmington at all. And when I got to that day is when I woke up. Somebody said Jesus took the steering wheel.
discernment I like to say all the time to my church family and I, I do have a song when we come in in the morning we have issues we have all kinds of issues um, in the church out of the church personally etc but when we come into the house it is a place that's been set aside I know sometimes we don't do the right thing in the house. But that does not stop us, those of us who know the Lord, especially if you read the Sunday school lesson this morning, they were dealing with Ezekiel about the purification of the house. Yeah, you messed up, but I'm going to bring you back. And this house is going to be my house. So I like to say to them, you know, when they come in, we have come into this house.
give my little testimony. My wife and I, we've been together 25 years. And, uh, I guess I, I don't look old, but I'm an old man, okay? Uh, I have five children, 12 grandchildren, one great grand. I tell you what, and all of them are doing well. They're blessed, Amen. good health, yes, good wives. And, and you know, uh, I know sometimes we, we don't want to sometimes talk about the goodness because people think that you're just boasting. <laughs> but you just gotta just, I reflect and uh, that's what every opportunity we pray, Amen. my wife and I, every morning. And I tell you what, it's good to have a good wife. Amen. So she, uh, she started, she says, uh, some years ago now, every morning, I don't care what, before we leave home, we get together and we pray. Amen. And, uh, and I thank God for the blessing. How he's ordered my step. Amen. You know, uh, all of my life, when I reflect back, in the military, Vietnam, came back. Uh, started working at the post office, worked there for 31 years. Got the job as a judge. Worked now 41 years. I'm just talking about the goodness of God. Because when I reflect back and I see where I was and some of my issues, Lord, how did you keep me in this? How do you... And um, and so I acknowledge that every day. And um, I'm so proud, you know. I look at EJ, go see him play football. I mean, God has got a lot. He's so humble. And I say this because my grandson is there too. And they, it is just so wonderful to have your children and be able to celebrate them and be able to go where they are. So I just wanted to say that. I'm a good guy, so. God is good to all of us, and we may not have had some of the same challenges, but when we look at our lives and our situation, we all can sit back and thank you, God. You're all so good. Again, God bless. Amen.
the emergency room. Well, the doctor came into the room. I got a little talk with Jesus.
song was just sung that said, every praise belongs to God, right? How many every praise belongs to God? How many like God is a healer? Can you all rest your feet with me, please? Can you rest your feet? I'll, I'll make it quick. Well, I'm going to say, I, I, I can't, we all having a good time, but there's somebody sitting home that's sick. But I come to say, no from the devil, that every praise belongs to God. And how many believe that as two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst? How many like God is a healer? How many like God is a healer? family of Brandon, raise your hand. And friends, and those who know him, and kind of like him and love him. On Tuesday while I was at work, um, I worked from 5 o'clock to 8 a.m. On, on Wednesdays and Thursdays, but that particular day, one of the young lady didn't go, so I went in. Around 8.30, 9 o'clock, Brandon called me on the phone and said, Mama, I can't breathe. Call Daddy. Now, his daddy was home on the other end of the house in the room sleeping. And Brandon was on the opposite end. Mm. Evan said earlier that when he, Brandon had got home that night, he was in the car for about 20 minutes. So he just thought Brandon was listening to music like he all and something was going on. <coughs> he said it took him that long to get out of the car, to get in the house, to make it in. I think he spoke to Edmund and I think Brother Robinson, excuse me, asked him if he wanted something to eat. He said no. Brother Robinson said he went to bed and he just went to sleep, didn't think anything of it because Brandon didn't say he wasn't feeling good. So here comes the call saying, I can't breathe. Here am I on James Island that work with my 99 year old. Now those of us who are parents, it doesn't matter if they're 60, 70, however old they are, that's still your child. So I'm calling my husband, I'm, I'm down the number, hoping he can wake up, and I'm saying, Lord, wake him up, wake him up, but you know, he, when he sleeps, he sleeps, he's a sound sleep. My mother would often say, Stinky, if the house was on fire, <laughs> Brother Rob would die in that fire. If you're knocking on that door, he wouldn't hear you, but I guess he was just that tired and just fell asleep. So all I can think of my mind is my child home can't catch his breath. Being in a nursing field, I know the brain can't go without oxygen for right, so right. long until damage sets in. So quickly I'm thinking, call 911. So I got on the phone and I called 911 because there's a fire station right on Wadmore and I'm saying, you know, you need to get to 1578 Tacky Point ASAP. And like they are, they gotta ask you a thousand questions. I said, sir, I'll ask you a question. Just get them going and I'll talk to you while on the phone. And he's asking, but can he talk? I said, he can't talk, he barely got up, I can't breathe. Then the phone dropped. I said, go and just kick the door open, do what you gotta do, get him. All right. But while they're doing that, 
I remember something called prayer. Anybody know prayer, sir? Because I'm miles away, can't get to him, so I'm just saying, oh, Lord, that's your child. You were there before the EMS tent even get there. When they got there, they found him stretched out on the floor. I think his insulin was somewhere in there. He might have been trying to get to it because he is a diabetic. They got him and took him to St. Francis. They're saying his temperature was 104. You know, by the time you get to 102, if you're not careful, you can start having convulsion. So here, that fever so high, blood sugar dropped. And they said he had a terrible case of the flu. But somebody said, God is a good God. Even in the midst of things going on, he's still good. So all I could do, I got Marcus on the phone, called Joy, called my sister. I called um, my cousin, and I said, because Dora lived down the street, I said, go to my house quick. I said, because Brandon's not feeling well. And then my husband said, when he woke up, he almost had a heart attack. Because he went sleeping. And when he woke up, here's what, light flashing. Strangers in the house, somebody's in the house saying, your child is sick, and I hear he's right in the, down the hall, in the bedroom, sleeping. How quick things can happen. But even if that was his time to go. From a little boy, he gave his life to the Lord. Emmanuel, you could say the last time you saw him, he was singing his heart out, doing what he loves to do. Many times I said, Brandon, you gotta slow it down, Brandon. I know you love to sing, I know you love to go, but those of you who know him, Brandon rips and runs. All right. He's always in somebody's church. Every time somebody calls, he goes. I know what it is to have that thing in you, but even in the midst, you still gotta take it easy. Because unlike those who don't have diabetes, you have diabetes though. You can't keep ripping and running. You gotta, you know, do what you're supposed to. You gotta get your rest and you gotta slow down sometimes. And isn't it funny how God sometimes allows things to happen? Sometimes just to slow you down. That car had to move in a whole week. Because sometimes he just feels he got to go. He gotta be there. We've had many conversations, Brandon. Slow down, Brandon. All this week. He's desired to get up. I believe he's lost maybe 10 or 15 pounds in what, five, six days. No appetite. Can he? Here we're singing in the house and he's moving his foot. He's moving his hand, y'all. But you know, the body is still yet weak. And even now, while we're gathered in this sanctuary, his group getting ready to sing, he's on his way to, back to the hospital not doing well right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I know God is still good. Yeah. Yeah. How do you remember the sermon on today? Going through while you're going through. How can I still come to church? Still get up and tell you that God is a good God when here my son going back to the hospital again. Because I know he is a good God. Is going to come and sing. There's a song that Brandon sings that is dear to my heart. It's called King of Kings. All right. All right. I was telling the choir that Brandon has a song that when you hear it, it's going to touch your heart. He tried this afternoon, he got dressed. He wanted to come, Jesus. but the body just wouldn't allow him. He's now having a lot of pain in his side. He's vomiting even more so. So I'm thinking it's, it's more than a flu. So while he's being transported to St. Francis Hospital, Roper Hospital, they're going to come and sing. They're going to dedicate it to Brother Brandon. Because if he was here, he would sing his heart out. Oh, how I love the Lord. My aunt said, I got so much to thank God for. When I look around church, I see my family. I see
see my husband. Yes, Lord. I see my sister and my brother. Yes, Lord. I see my other three sons. Yes, Lord. My grandson, my daughter-in-law. Yes. I see my cousins. Yes. I see my new church family who I love. Yes. I see my other, the first church family, Greater Bethel. Yes, I see so many people who I've gotten on the phone. I see New Jerusalem who I've called and said, we're having a service, would you come? Oh, how I thank God. I see former members where we serve the wines. Yes. I see St. James Bethel. Yes, Lord. Emmanuel, all the churches come out. My young lady who works for me, she's out here on tonight. I got so much to thank God for. My new friend, when I walked in, she was sitting in the back, and I said, what you doing out here? She said, I'll just wait. I came with a friend of mine. I said, oh, no, you will be my special guest. All right. Come on in this church and sit on the front. I thank God for you Amen. for being here. Amen. So, choir. Strengthen yourself. I know these, these people are crazy about Brandon. Yeah. They love him to death. But they're going to sing as if he was standing in front of them saying, Mix, open your mouth. <laughs> Joy, sing. Soprano, I want to hear you. <laughs> they're going to sing and dedicate a song to one of their leaders who loved them just the same. Amen. Oh, how I thank Jesus for you. I thank her. Whatever. <laughs>
showed up in your life. Come on, don't fool me now. I'm so glad that he showed up in your life. All right, we're going to do it like him again. Give me C sharp. Come on, give me C. No, give me C sharp. <laughs> sitting all night. I need you to stretch your toes and your fingers. Pull your head out. Loosen your girdle a little bit. Don't play with me all night. Somebody win. Let me get that one. Come and go with me. Come and go with me. Come and go with me.
JAI 166, uh, BTV 586, HBY 789. Somebody said, I don't even know the whole message. <laughs> but somebody needs to leave. One is a Volkswagen, I think one's a Tahoe. You got somebody parked. But it can't get out. The Volkswagen, the Tahoe, the Tahoe, the And thank you so much for all your praise and song and singing. Thank you, for generations. Your friends are proud. Now, give it over the floor again. If someone still has a testimony that you think would help somebody else, maybe it's just going to help you, but I promise you it will help somebody else. You're free to come at this time before we bring the service to God. I want to cut it off if there's something, your story, that you want to share at this time.
my children would say a lot of times that when I was raising them on John's Island, I would say, Mama, come on, let's go to church now. I said, I don't feel like going. I said, I just don't feel like going. Children would push me, and every time I would go, and would plant a seed right. in my hand. It wasn't uh, any times that I didn't go when I was pressed and pressed my way. She planted a seed in my hand. She was an angel for me during the time I raised my children on John's Island. I want all of you to know that. I want to share the song with you tonight. It's my song. My mother died when I was 14 years old. And uh, all of my life, I I've, I've, I've broke out in, from my adult life, I broke out in cold sweat every time I go to the hospital, every time I go to the doctor. Every time I get sick, I'm thinking I'm gonna die from cancer. Uh, cancer's gonna overtake me before I get 36 years old. But I want you all to know that I stand here today uh, after age 45, I had a scare. And uh, the doctor told me from his office, he scheduled the surgeon, he scheduled the mammogram, and he scheduled the uh, ultrasound. And I said, as he scheduled it, by the time I get to the ultrasound, by the time I get to the surgeon, and by the time I get to the mammogram, you ain't gonna find nothing. Right. Right. Just as I spoke out in faith, God moved. Mercy. God said, my baby got that much faith in me? Let me move. Amen. And he did move. Amen. The ultrasound, it kept testing and looking and looking. They were searching for something. Couldn't find a thing. Mammogram couldn't find a thing. I went to the surgeon, and the surgeon said, if you were my wife, I tell you, you have nothing to worry about. You just have irregular tissue that look like something, but it ain't nothing. I want you to bear with me as I sing this song. I learned God gave me the song All right. when my favorite aunt died a few years ago. But I want y'all to know this is what God is to me Amen. tonight. Amen. It's sung in the in the in the tune of an old days song, and I pray that it doesn't offend anyone here today. Right. He's my joy, he's my strength, he's my peace, and he's my shield. He's a great and mighty God. He'll comfort you and he'll comfort me. Just keep the faith and believe. He will say in church, keep on praying. You better keep serving Jesus. You better keep on, you better keep serving Jesus. You better.
like this. You've got a story to tell. And the story I want to tell is about what I call, or who I call, our miracle child. God blessed us with a daughter some 38 years ago. She was born prematurely. All right. Two pounds, two and a half pounds. They said she was going to have problems, she may be blind, she may be deaf, she may be this, she may be that. But I know what God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We prayed and prayed. This daughter is fine today. She's been through a lot. She's been tried and tested. And as fate would have it, the devil, like you said, never stops. As she grew older, she developed a condition with her back, scoliosis, a serious curvature of the spine. Every night, we prayed. The family prayed. My husband and I prayed. He anointed her back. My husband did. <coughs> Anointed that grace. <coughs> She'd have to go periodically, they would measure the curvature. Went one time, no more curvature. All right. All right. She was straight as an arrow. Amen. But as she started growing, then it came back again. She was away in college. She said, Mom, you know, when I come home, I think I'm ready to have this surgery. And the thing about it is, well, listen, time is, time is everything. My hair always says that. Because the doctor said, we really need to do something now. Because her ch cavity, her chest cavity is being crowded because of the curvature. So we have to do something now. But God had it such that she was ready. She was ready for that surgery. Went through the surgery. Before we went to the surgery, she said, let's go see another doctor. She'd been treated by Dr. Reed. Great orthopedic surgeon at the time. So we went to MUSC. Met the doctor who was going to do the surgery. She said to me, Mom, I don't think I want him to do my surgery. Mm. I think he might drop something in the operating room. He seems like he mm. might just drop something mm. out of the mouth of babes. Mm. Went with Dr. Reed. Had her surgery. Very invasive surgery. When they showed me what they were going to do, I nearly passed out. Because mm. they actually had to open her entire back. Go in there, stretch the spine, mm. delicately get everything in place, and I won't go into the details as to how her back is being held together today, but she ended up being even taller than me because they had to actually stretch her spine. Mm. You all have seen her here, wearing those high heel shoes that I don't like for wear because of her back. But I'm saying that God is good. Yes, he is. He can, God will do whatever he yes. promises to do. Yes. God yes. has yes. faith in him. Yes. But like you said, he never, ever stops. No. Before the surgery, some of my clients on James Island said to me, because they knew, and they were praying, and they were part of this James Island Christian church. Not that it matters, but it was a white church with some strong Christian women. And they said, we want to pray for your daughter. Why don't you come to the 12 o'clock noonday prayer? Bring her. We'll pray over her. Mm. I talked to my daughter. She said, Mom, I don't know. I don't think I want to come. I said, well, honey, I'm not going to push you. You just do what the Lord would have you to do. I said, if you don't come, don't worry. I'll go and stand in the gap. Amen. Yeah, I went, met with my clients who remember that church. We had to walk upstairs to get to the room where we were going to be praying. We got in a circle, hell hands. I'm standing in the gap with my daughter. All of a sudden, I heard those steps. Mm. My daughter, mm. just in the nick of time, Amen. she came and stood for herself. Yeah. Yeah. And as we were praying for her, I saw this light Hallelujah. shining down on her, Jesus. and I knew she was going to be okay. Jesus. I went home, talked to before I went home, talked to the ladies, and they said. You and your daughter need to go home and write God a thank you note. All right. I wrote a thank you note. She wrote a thank you note. Yeah. We placed it on the altar in our home. It's still there to this day. Yeah. Still on that altar. Yes. The night before the surgery, she said, Mom, here's this envelope. There's one for you. And there's one for Judon. There's one for uh, Grandma. But I don't want you all to open it until I'm in the operating room. Mm. <coughs> When I opened mine, it says, Dear Mom, 
don't open this until I'm in the upper meeting. And don't cry because God is with me. I will be all right. Mercy. And that's the kind of faith she has. But like I said, God never stops. Amen. So now she is having a baby in the delivery room. I'm in there with her. Judon's out there reading scriptures. Here comes Desmond. All of a sudden, the baby, there's a crisis. Well, let me back up. Because because of her back, she needed an epidural, but they had to make sure that it was done correctly. There was nobody in the hospital. So this doctor was called in. He came from home, had on his leather jacket and all of that. He gave her the epidural. So now she's in delivery. So the baby's coming, and when the baby came, all of a sudden, Desmond stopped breathing. The nurses got quiet over there. They're trying to make him breathe, and I'm like, What's going on? What's going on? Judon's in the waiting room reading scriptures, praying. All of a sudden, this same doctor who came to get for the epidural in his leather jacket, he walks in. They thought he was gone. He walks back in. He goes over, grabs our grandson, and all of a sudden, whatever he did, the baby started crying. So Desmond's here today, 10 years old. Amen. What am I saying? God is a good God. Yes, he is. And this same daughter who went through so much, one thing I did want to point out too is when she came home, the premature little two and a half, two and a half pound baby, when she came home, my mother was babysitting one day. All of a sudden, Nico stopped breathing. Mom called the EMS. She says, Nico's eyes started twirling around in her head. Mom says, I grabbed her and instinctively sucked all the mucus out of her nose with my mouth. Mm. So not only did God try to take her, he tried to take her son that was born years later. Yes. No matter what we're going through, yes. no matter what it looks like, yes. no matter what it feels like, yes. God is still God. Yes. God is still good. Yes. The same God who is with us. Yes. When we're on the mountaintop, Perfect. it's the same God, hallelujah, who's with us when we're in the valley. Yes. He will never, never, never let us fall. Never. Never let us fall. Never, never. God is such a good God. And I just thank you all for allowing me to share this. Yes. Yes. Because it might help somebody. When you, yes. It's easy to have faith and to trust when it's something kind of simple. Yes. But when you're talking about something serious, yes. something like opening up your child's back, Yes. And trusting that God's going to work it out and that she's going to be able to walk again and be fine, yes. that takes faith for that. Yes. And I just thank God for that. Amen. Thank you all for listening. It isn't about having our soul to get a seat up in the kingdom. Yes. We're going to go through things. Yes. But as long as I know that my soul will have a seat up in the kingdom. Yes. Yes. I came down because I wanted you all to see me. Hallelujah. I need you all to know that I know that God is real. Yes. Several years ago, I started having back pain. I thought it was just overworking, doing too much, but the pain started getting more severe and severe as the years passed. About six, seven years ago, I went to my primary care doctor and he took some x-rays. He didn't see anything. He sent me to the chiropractor. I went to the chiropractor for about two years. I said, I'm not driving all the way over to Folly Road two or three times a week, and I'm not feeling any better. After the chiropractor, he sent me to <coughs> therapy, physical therapy. So I had eight to 10 weeks of physical therapy and then a step down session after that session. Still nothing seems to be working, but I kept pressing my way. After that, the pain got to be so excruciating I would just not 
move sometimes. And then other times I had to move. About three years ago, in early 2011, I had my, grand, my great grandchildren at the house. And CJ said to me, Granny, why are you walking like that? I was actually bent over, walking, walking, bent over, but not realizing that I was bent over until people started telling me that I was bent over. And when he said that, I said, okay, Lord, it's time for us to do something. Because out of the mouths of babies, he noticed that my posture had changed. I went back to my chiropractor, I mean, to my physical, I mean, my uh, primary care doctor. And he said, well, I don't know what we're going to do. I said, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. A few weeks prior to me going back to him, my husband is a remote controller. And he flips from channel to channel. And it seemed like every time I went in the bedroom, there was this infomercial from the Spine Institute. And I just sat down one day and I said, why am I always hearing this infomercial? Maybe God is trying to tell me something. So I told my primary care doctor I wanted to go to the Spine Institute. So he said, okay, I got a good friend over there, Dr. Puletti. And I'll call and let him know that you're coming and I'm gonna give you a recommendation. So I went over, had the MRI done. Dr. Puletti was the only person who had seen this nodule in my back where I was in a car accident many, many years ago. And he showed me the x-ray. And the bone had healed, but it heals just like my fingers, one longer than the other. One bone split and healed as two. The longest one was pushing on my disc. And the pain was coming from the nerve bumping against this disc that was in the way. Then he said, okay, we're gonna start with some shots. So we started with one shot. That lasted maybe three months. I had another shot on hold and I took that one. Well, they weren't lasting long. So he said, well, the next thing is surgery. And he said, the best thing about the surgery that I would recommend for you is very non-invasive. You won't have any pain whatsoever afterwards. <clears throat> and you'll be up and about in about three, four days. But the recovery time would take like six to 10 months because it would be healing from the inside out and not from the outside in. That was a long 10 months, y'all, to be from my church. All right. But I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And God did the work because Dr. Paletti did the surgery and he said everything worked out okay. But there was one more thing. He said, you have two places that needs to be repaired. And I'm not gonna do both at one time. So he did the L3 and L4, and I was standing up straight as a board, walking around in my high heel shoes, being cute and everything. Oh, yeah. All right? Yeah. Next thing I know, I'm in pain again. Because L5 <coughs> down here All right. at the tailbone that works with your limbs, my legs started having pain. And this right leg that I have to drive with, to go everywhere with, take my husband to the doctor and everywhere, says it's not going to cooperate. All right. And I said, no, Lord, that's not going to happen. 
So, I'm still working with this lower disc, but the shot that they gave me about a month or two ago, about a month and a half, that allowed me to be able to have relief of the pain that was in this leg. I couldn't walk, I couldn't stand up, I couldn't lay down, I couldn't do anything because everything seemed to make the leg hurt. Mm -hmm. At night, I prop the leg up. Okay. At another night, I'm propping the head up. I said, Lord, how could I turn? Where could I turn to get some relief from this pain? Yes. But I never stopped never. pushing those doors. I never stopped Enjoy. praising Enjoy. my God. Enjoy. I never stopped yes. saying, why, Lord, me? Yes. 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 Not me. Yes, Lord. The God in me allowed me to know yes, that this is only a test. Yes. <laughs> that I had a woman, he said, with the infirmity for 18 long years. Come on. And I healed her body. Yes, yes. And I'm waiting on my yes. healing. Yes. Because I believe that God has already yes. healed my body. Yes. Manifestation just hadn't set in yet. Brother Lennon, huh? say my testimony. Yes. Wait on the Lord. Yes. See? Say wait on the Lord. Yes. Wow. Shall we do their strength? Yes. They shall mount up. They shall run and not be weary.
something has said or something has been said on tonight yeah, yeah. to make you think that when you get to that place where you feel that you just can't take life anymore you just can't get through that thing you're going through you're going to reflect back on all the stories that you heard on tonight reminding you that God is a good God every problem situation may not be good but God is a good God I want to tell you thank you guys for coming out Words can't express. The mere fact when the invitation went out, you heard and you came. I said thank you. The musicians that came out on tonight, thank you so much for pouring out your spirit through your playing. The choirs, the groups that sang, I said thank you. My friends and family from the various churches, I said thank you. My Facebook people giving me a smile. Phone calls. People on the highways and the byway. We said on today during our worship service, there's a corner right not too far from the church that I've been going out in the community trying to make myself known, just talking to the different people. There's a group of men that sits out there who do their thing, which doesn't bother me. I go on and I just spread the good news. Amen. Some said I'm coming to church. On today, a man that was in a wheelchair, he came out to church on today. We had our very first member to join last Sunday. An 18 year old said he wants to be a part of this ministry. Amen. So I'm so grateful for what God is doing. I say to my Emmanuel family, my new family, that I love so much in five, five Sundays. I'm working with the world's best ministerial staff you can ever find in the West Africa area. I think that for my brother who's here on tonight, all my families and friends, I wouldn't dare start calling names because I'll leave somebody up. But I said thank you to everybody who have come here. This is just round one. We're going to have another praise and testimony so that those who may not have gotten their testimony in, you go spread the word and tell somebody, come to a place where they allow you to be free in your worship and to tell your story. So thank you so much for being here. Would you please stand to your feet as we're about to bring the service to the close? Thank you for your patience, those who came from the beginning.
some were here before the door was even open, sitting up in cars outside. Thank you as well for being here and staying for the entire service. Emmanuel in Charleston, Bobby Emmanuel, Greater Macedonia, St. Luke, St. John, St. James, Wesley United Methodist Church. Come on, help me with some more. Hebrew Zion, Jacob Presbyterian, Jerusalem, Greater Bethel. Is that everybody? I said Macedonia. Calvary. Thank you guys so much. We're going to bless the offering as well as, I think they got a little bit of sweet for you in the back. <laughs> Piece of cake and something to wash it down with. Yes, Heavenly Father, we stop right now, God, to tell you thank you. Father, I thank you for this worship service. Oh, God, I thank you for your people, God, heard the word and it came out, God. Those who told their stories, that it is encouragement to somebody who may not have gone through yet. But perhaps God will go through. They'll reflect back on the words that were spoken on tonight. Bless your people in a mighty way, God. As they depart from this yet building, but not from your presence. Father, we thank you for the repass in the back that has blessed us our body. And just give us a little bit of strength. Father, I'm grateful to be your servant on tonight. I humble myself before you, God, as I serve your people. Thank you, God, for allowing me to be here. Thank you, God, for all of your people, God. Do, God, what only you can do. Somebody's in need of a, a door being opened on the mor tomorrow morning. Somebody, God, heart is, heart is about to, heart, the house is about to go in foreclosure. Somebody, God, bill is due, and they just don't know where that money's coming from. I speak it right now that you open up that window. Open it up, God. Give them a miracle. Do something supernatural that only you can do. They'll be so careful, God, to, to tell you thank you. And they'll tell somebody else if it had not been for God. What have I done? So, God, as we leave right now, see us to our destination safe. Until we meet again. We say thank you. We bless you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Come on, let's sing. Let everybody say amen.